Moving into our relationship analysis questions, note that this old version of the test has a slightly different format for how you enter the answers. So on the new test, when you, well, on the more recent versions of the test, you'll be actually bubbling in true or false, true or false, and then CE into your bubble sheet. Here, they do the same thing, you know, true, 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 false, etc. But you bubble in A through E. So it's the same thing. It's just a different way to bubble in the answer. Ultimately, the questions are the same and you know, it's still good practice. So uh, just note on the real test when you take it, you won't be bubbling bubbling in A through E for these questions. You'll be bubbling in true, true, C, E, or true, false, or false, true, whatever it is. So starting with 39, element number 12 and element number 20 undergo similar chemical reactions. Well, pull out a periodic table, which I'm doing right now, and look at those elements. So element 12 is magnesium. And element 20 is calcium, and they are both group two elements. They're in the same group. And typically, elements in the same group exhibit very similar chemical behavior. So we would say that this first one is indeed true because they're both group twos. They're both going to form plus two ions. They're going to typically uh, exhibit the same kinds of chemical uh, reactivity. Element 12 and element 20 have similar valence electron configurations. And yes, that's why they typically exhibit the same kind of behavior, because they both have two valence electrons. They're both S2. In the case of magnesium, 3S2, calcium, 4S2. And that electron configuration of having those two valence electrons is what causes this similarity. And so not only is it true, true, but this is going to be a true, true CE. And so 39 is going to be choice A. 40. The element carbon forms the basic structural framework of more compounds than any other element. So that is true, kind of a factoid. You just need to know that organic compounds are really, really numerous. When you start linking together carbons to start creating chains and you add your oxygens and your nitrogens, you can create a whole ton of different compounds. And so yes, carbon-based compounds, organic compounds do um, do this. There's more of them than any other. So that's going to be true. Carbon carbon bond is ionic. Well, that's false because they're both nonmetals, and so that bond is covalent. And so we should get true false, which for number 40 should be C. The molecule CO2 has a net dipole moment of zero. Well, if we were to sketch out CO2, you would see, just doing the structure without the electrons, I guess we can just throw the electrons in here. We would see that this is linear. It's sp hybridized in the carbon atom. We get a linear structure because there's no unpaired electrons around the central atom carbon. And so this is linear. And indeed, this will be nonpolar, which is essentially what the question is asking about, because uh, there's no way to divide this molecule in a way, in, in a way to make it uh, asymmetrical. Like if I slice this, I get a symmetry no matter how I slice this. So I don't have a positive portion of the molecule on one side and a negative on the other. And so I have no net dipole. So this is true. When they say no net dipole moment or a dipole moment of zero, they're basically saying it's nonpolar. And that is true. The arrangement of atoms in the CO2 molecule is linear and symmetrical. And the bond polarities within the molecule are canceled out. Yeah, this is basically what we just said. So this is not only true second statement, this is going to be a true, true CE. And so 41 is going to be A. Because remember, the bonds here are polar. There is some electron density being pulled towards the oxygens because they are more electronegative than carbon. So, you know, this is going to be slightly negative, slightly negative, slightly positive. But notice this cancels, right? The negative slightly pulled in this direction and the negative slightly pulled in the other direction cancel. That's why you get no, ni no dipole moment. And so that's why 41 will indeed be true, true, and then A will mean true, true CE. A catalyst that increases the rate of the forward reaction also increases the rate of the reverse reaction. True. You can't just increase the rate of one reaction or the other. You've got to increase the rate of both when you use that catalyst. So that is true. Now, the activation energies being equal is definitely not true. Um, I guess there are some circumstances where it would be, but actually... I don't think so. That would pretty much never happen in, in most reactions. For example, if I have something like this as my reaction diagram, the activation energy of the forward reaction would be this guy, but the activation energy of the reverse reaction would be this, right? The, the, whenever there's a change in energy, you're going to have different activation energies. So this is false. 
And so we get true false. And so it looks like 42 is C.